I'm Peggy Peck, MedPage Today. In light of the controversy surrounding Enhance, including the unanticipated and, according to some, biologically implausible finding that LDL reduction had no effect on atherosclerosis, it is not surprising that there was little agreement between study investigator Dr. Evan Stein and Enhance critic Dr. Alan Taylor. In this series of interviews, we examine three key areas of disagreement, mechanism of action, trial design, and clinical implications. Part 3, Clinical Implications. In Parts 1 and 2 of this MedPage Today video report, we found no common ground in the views of the enhanced investigator Dr. Evan Stein and Dr. Alan Taylor, co-author of an invited enhanced editorial in the New England Journal of Medicine. Now we turn to a matter of critical importance to clinicians and patients. What are the clinical implications of the enhanced findings? What now for ezetimib? Dr. Stein, you're a researcher, you're a clinician, I want to get a sense from you that you are convinced, or are you convinced, that there, A, is no potential for harm with this drug, and that, that B, the drug does have a vascular benefit. I think lowering LDL cholesterol is the vascular benefit. I don't want to argue the cholesterol theory. I want to get from you, doctor, do I believe, your sense I, on those Do I believe questions. the drug is safe and effective? Right. Okay. To the point that I only take azetamide, mm -hmm. okay, personally. So I not only have my mouth, my money where my mouth is, I have my heart where my mouth is. Okay. All right. I don't take a statin. I have some side effects on statins. I don't need a huge amount of LDL reduction. LDL runs around 140 and HDL of about 95, but I get a good response to azetamide, which is what I go. I don't treat patients with any drug if they don't get the response that I want. These days, my referrals are those patients that the docs out there cannot get under optimal control, have exhausted alternate. I'd see 1,200 familial hypercholesterolemic patients, FH patients. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Many of whom I'm treated since I've been in Cincinnati for 31 years. So Many who are alive today because of these drugs, statins, and the ability for us to get their LDL levels to, to ranges that were unheard of 20 so, years ago. So going back, so effective? You do think it's effective? I think yes. it's effective. I think it's, it's safe. safe. Yes, yes. And I think that the benefit of LDL reduction will prove out when we finish the same type of studies that have, were done in Prove It, that were done in uh, TNT, that were done in Ideal, because that's the only way to establish this. We can go back, the harm that is being done now by scaring patients off effective LDL lowering drug is no different, and I'm sure you remember just five years ago when Resuvastatin came on the market, we had people on television, we had, there was Sidney Wolf, there was uh, Graham from the FDA going and saying these drugs should not be approved, they're dangerous, they were writing books, they were appearing on television in every country in the world indicating how bad. Today, I don't see them apologizing to the widows of the people they created. I never saw them visit people in hospital for the heart failure cases that they created. I didn't see them talk to the people who had bypasses. And you can calculate, based on the meta-analysis, that for every 40 milligrams of LDL increase that people will get by stopping an effective additional drug is going to result in 20% increase in cardiovascular risk over the next three years. People who will stop these effective drugs, now you could argue whether they should be treated with higher dose statins where there is no financial penalty for going up from 20 to 80 milligrams of a drug and if a patient can tolerate that, that makes most sense and that's what I do. Mm -hmm. But if you can't get to the LDL goals, which have been well based on evidence, then you need to add f additional drugs. For people, which I heard Cromwell say, go out and add fibrates is nonsense. FH, obviously he's never seen an FH patient in his life because he wouldn't make that statement. You cannot go out and treat FH patients with fibrates. It's almost a contraindication for the drug. 
Okay. You can, to add niacin, you're not going to get significant additional LDL reduction. In addition, if the evidence for adding azetamide to a statin is weak based on enhance, it is non-existent for adding a fibrate to a statin. Dr. Taylor, what is your recommendation based on the findings from enhance? I would say to a clinician, you know, use everything else you have available to you at the moment. Titrate the statin, try other drugs known to work, binding resins, fibrates, niacin. There's lots of choices. Work on adherence. Patients simply don't adhere to drugs well enough. You can get great results by just asking patients to faithfully take their pills, something we don't pay attention to well enough. So there's a lot of things you can do with a patient to intensify their therapy beyond using azetamibe. Azetamibe is a drug for clinical trials at the moment. Speaking of clinical trials, I understand that you have an azetamibe trial. Tell us about that. We're conducting an azetamibe trial in which we have patients randomized to azetamibe and niacin. Azetamibe to lower LDL as a component to statin mm -hmm. therapy and niacin to raise predominantly HDL as a component to statin therapy to test those two secondary strategies after a statin is used, LDL reduction or HDL raising and IMT as the endpoint. When you have these concerns about this drug, that this I, this seems to be a bit of an ethical a, conundrum to me. Well, I think, so how do we get through that? Right. On the one hand, I say to the clinicians that refer patients to the trial, you've got no use for this drug in your clinical armamentarium at the moment. If you have patients on this drug, you probably should stop it. And if you're thinking about starting this drug, you probably shouldn't. But we need more data. And at the moment, the data are strictly interpreted, interpreted as showing no benefit, but also no harm. And so in that, the balance is still in the favor of the patient, suggesting that you know, there's a neutral result there. I think we need the answer from more data. Only through more data will we get to where we need to be. So the one role I think this drug has right now is for using clinical trials so we can understand it better. But you've raised so many red flags about this drug. What this would it take to get this drug off the market then? I mean, one, what would be a crucial, th what would be One a negative outcomes trial, not even adverse. If the drug has no benefit, it has no role in clinical medicine. And I'm not going to assert it's a placebo, but nor am I going to assert that through LDL reduction, this drug will have benefit until it's proven. And it forces us to go back and figure out what did we learn from O2 when it was licensed. And we've learned that beyond, behind a smoke screen of LDL reduction are no positive signals on endothelial function, an important surrogate measure, no positive signals now in atherosclerosis, an important surrogate measure, and connecting those dots is a plausible mechanism of interference with lipid transport, which this drug has. It is clearly shown to interact with the highest affinity HDL receptor in an absorbed fashion, and that in no way would you plausibly hypothesize that that could have any clinical benefit and could be harmful. So let's wake up, folks. Let's add, add it all up. Once again, Dr. Stein. If we allow a million patients to go off this drug, raise their LDLs by an average of 40 milligrams per deciliter over the next three years, we will kill more people than have died in the total Iran conflict, Iraq conflict in the last five years. And there, the discussion ends. On one side, a trial investigator who says his trial was fatally flawed, but no blame should be laid on the drug, which he contends is both safe and effective. On the other hand, a noted researcher who says all the data point to a problem with the drug, a problem that would at best suggest no benefit and at worst threaten harm. This is far from the last word on either Enhance or Azetamibe, but as we wait for definitive endpoint trial results, clinicians will vote with their prescription pads. I'm Peggy Peck, MedPage Today.